Why another video about cis people? I just find you all so interesting. We are going to be talking about cis people again. The cis people who do not like being called cis. If you're transgender, you probably know that these cis people exist. If you're cisgender, maybe you don't. That's why we're here. We're going to talk about why, who, where, what, how, huh? Why get so worked up about a prefix that literally just means the opposite of transgender? Some of these people prefer being called normal. Hello, it's me from the editing process. Uh, just popping in to say that my pronouns are he, him, or they, them. And also, I have a second channel now, so... Go and check it out. Link in the description. So why do some cis people prefer being called normal? It's so interesting, isn't it? Normal. What a word. What is it that you relate to about this word and why do you cling to it? Well, it might have something to do with cis people being the historical and cultural default in society. The default, the factory setting human, the pre-made character that automatically pops up in the character creation screen when you first play Skyrim. That, that kind of vibe. The history that was taught to me in school, for example, was literally written by cis white men for cis white men about them from their perspective. Of course, you consider yourself the default if media, history, society, and just everyone upholds your identity as the norm and anyone who is not like you as, you know, abnormal. It's kind of hilarious and hypocritical that you are getting so mad about us calling you cisgender when you have been more than okay labelling everyone who is not exactly like you for the past hundreds and hundreds of years. Very few of you have ever complained about the labelling system when it was you labelling other people. But now that you have been labelled, I guess the game just isn't as fun anymore. Not as one-sided, not as unfair. Looking over at the video that I've made, I'm realising that I'm just so worried about cis people being offended by what I'm saying. It says a lot about what it's like being transgender online. Just everything that I say has to be run through dozens of filters in my mind, trying to figure out if this is just, am I going too far? Am I going to get a phone call saying, look, we've tolerated you until this point, but you're just being too mean to the cis people on the internet, Corbett. A lot of marginalised and oppressed people actually love labels. And I, I, I wanted to talk about that. We really do love labels. And some people are a little bit confused as to why. Why do we love this whole labelling thing so much? Don't we want to be considered normal? Isn't that the end goal that we integrate and assimilate into just normal and everyone's normal? And then I guess we're all happy or something. Why are we highlighting the things about us that are different? if this difference has historically been why we are oppressed? Why does it appear that we are playing by the rules written by the oppressors, highlighting our differences, underlining them? The thing is, by entering this framework, we can hold up a mirror to the people who created that framework to begin with. By accepting labels, we can then talk about oppressors. Oppressed people have always had labels stuck to their heads by the normals. The thing that's just really funny, and when I say funny, I mean funny in that way where it's kind of funny, but it's also just so exhausting. It's so funny to me that these quote-unquote normal people have just failed to consider Cisgender. that someone might end up labelling them back. Cisgender. Why call you cisgender? in order to better study you, of course. I'm slightly kidding, but not completely. See, the thing is, is that it's almost impossible to properly analyse and discuss oppression and power dynamics in society if we don't have words to refer to the people doing the oppressing. If we didn't have labels like cisgender, able, white, etc., it would be ridiculously difficult to have conversations about oppression. It, it would be almost impossible. And obviously, that's exactly what some people want. Some people very much want it to be difficult to talk about these things, because if you're on the side that benefits from oppression, then... You have a vested interest in preventing people from talking about how unfair those power dynamics are. According to some people, I should have called my last video Dear Normal People, which would have been absolutely the most ridiculous and confusing thing ever. Can you imagine? What? 
Normal means different things to different people. I, for example, don't really think it's very normal to speculate about people's genitals, but a lot of cis people do think that's a pretty normal thing to do. Using the term cisgender was simply the best way to refer to the demographic of people that I was addressing. And I wasn't just going to write, dear not transgender people, because I'm a YouTuber. Titles are important to me. I get it. It can be pretty uncomfortable to be labelled. It can be unsettling, especially if you're not used to that part of your identity being underlined and being pointed out. It can feel a little bit reductive. It can feel weird. I think part of the process of coming to terms with a term is simple repetition. If you're not transgender, congratulations, you're probably cisgender. Okay, so I kind of want to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Don't you think it's weird that TERFs often push the idea that trans people are delusional and that we think our experiences are the same to theirs when we are the ones literally asking you to please use the word cisgender to refer to yourselves in order to differentiate our experiences? Just like a lot of TERF rhetoric, it makes almost no sense when you actually think about it. Trans people don't deny that there's a difference between us and cisgender people. We are often some of the first to try and point out the differences in how we are treated and our experiences. Strange. It's almost like TERF discourse is a dishonest smokescreen preventing us from analysing oppressive systems and deconstructing things like the patriarchy. Now that's what I call feminism. I have a video about TERFs in the works and it's been in the works for a while now, but you know what? It's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a heavy subject. And I know that TERFs tend to like the word biological instead of normal in order to refer to themselves. Picture it. Dear biological people. (laughs) It doesn't work. I am trans and I am technically biological. I am a living, breathing thing. I am, am, am alive. My body is biological. Can can you imagine me making a video like, dear biological people or dear normal people? (laughs) Hey, normal people, stop doing this. It, it, It wouldn't make sense. What kind of normal person? What does normal even mean? Refusing to accept the term cisgender or sparking discourse questioning its very use prevents us from having conversations like the one I had about Elliot Page in my last video. And of course, like I said previously, that's exactly what some people want. So let's get it straight. Or, I don't know, not, not, not really that straight. Normal people have been labelling everyone else for hundreds of years. Anyone who is different to you, and most of you have never complained about that. This whole labelling system, it's been absolutely fine for you for so long. And I guess what's so unsettling about all of this for you is that suddenly other people have a position of control when it comes to terminology and just when it comes to words. Other people have an understanding of your social status and your role in society. Suddenly you are also being analysed. The internet has given platforms to many people who have never been given platforms before, who have never had the opportunity to speak up about things like this. Some people are going to refer to you with words. I know, incredible, right? Incroyable. See, I actually love the term cisgender. I might not love all of the things that cisgender people do or all of the things that they say about transgender people, but as a term, I think it's extremely useful and great. It's not pejorative. It's simply the opposite of transgender. It makes complete sense. Everyone should be on board with it. It's just the opposite of transgender. So simple. The word you use to describe someone or something often says a lot about how you view the opposite of that thing. What I mean is if we call people who aren't trans normal, that just implies that people who are trans are abnormal. A little, it's a little bit, probably not the best course to take. If we call people who aren't trans biological, then that implies that people who are trans aren't biological? What's the opposite of biological? Dead or a robot, I guess? So trans people are either abnormal or dead robots, depending on who you talk to. Also, it's completely unscientific. It makes no sense to label a portion of the population normal. It's not scientific. Biological also makes no sense because all humans are biological. All of this is is kind of hilarious to me. And when I say hilarious, I mean I'm laughing through the pain. This might be one of the most ridiculous and longest running historical examples of people being able to dish it, but not being able to take it at 
all. When we dare to refer to you with a word that isn't even negative, it's just a descriptive word, you just, you just can't take it. I'm not talking about you specifically as a person. I'm talking about power dynamics. I'm talking about the people who have had power and who have been doing the labeling, finally just being referred to with a word and losing their shit. So, hashtag not all cis people, I guess. <laughs> okay, seriously, I'm sorry for being so mean to cis people. I really want to apologize to any cisgender person who has been hurt by the contents of this video. Allow me to offer you this as a small apology and token of my appreciation for your gender. Cisgender, cisgender, cisgender. It's okay to be cisgender. 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 If you would like to support this channel, then you can go and check out my Patreon where I post exclusive stuff. A massive thank you to my Patreon producers, especially Mountain Snow, Reasonably Agitated Honeybee, Hazel, Alexandria Chloe, LPQ Silver, Lunos Nocturne, Moira, Patrick Feeney, Mandy Fletcher, Zeus1257, Samantha Starling, Peter A, John Carmack, Metal Gamer21, Ezekiel Panapucci, Ulrich LS, Cynical Boomer, Leon Sinclair, Jason Miller, Emmett Pearson, and Dan Brown.